Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since we did a video, but today what we're going to do is a 1,000 mile review. Finally have 1,000 miles on Miracle the Race Red Mach 1. So let's talk about what we've done to the car so far. Come on around this way and we'll look. Before we ever took delivery of the car, we had wheels and tires. We have the Belgian VF5s on the front and the back. On the back, we have 315 3520s, um, little G255 tires. On the front, we have 20 by 11 Belgian VF5s, 20 by 10, with 285, 35, 20s on the front so that was the very first modification and if you look at the stance of the car you'll notice that it sits nice and sleek we have not lowered the car it is the stock ride height and I don't intend to lower it I like the way it sits and it rides um, it rides really nice we uh, took it to Virginia Dominion Raceway, Dominion Raceway, and it, it handled flawlessly. So what was the second mod that we did? Well, the second mod that we did was to replace the suitcase resonator, as they call it, with the MBRP, um, not H-pipe, but X-pipe. So I'm gonna get in and crank it up and let you listen to what it sounds like in sport mode, which is what I normally uh, ride in. obnoxiously loud but it's loud enough to uh, sound good it doesn't drone there's no drone uh, you can even start it up in quiet mode I still have the stock mufflers which is the active exhaust so you can start it up in quiet mode if you choose and it will be basically as quiet as a mouse so that was the second mod the third mod that we did is right before you we put on the GT 500 style rear spoiler. This came with the flat blade spoiler because this is a base car. This is not a, a handling pack car. This is a base car. So we added a, um, I want to call it eBay special GT500 style uh, rear spoiler. And what I did find that when you buy an aftermarket spoiler, it will not have the bolt holes for the gurney flap. Now this gurney flap is a Ford Performance, the original equipment, gurney flat that goes on these cars. And in order to attach it to my car, I had to use nut certs, drill holes, put nut certs. So now mine is removable just like it would be if you had the stock GT500 Sport. So far, so good. I have to say it's a very good quality considering I think at the time the spoiler was 129 bucks. So that's that's really reasonable and we try to keep everything reasonable to put that in perspective I got a discount from uh, I can't remember which Ford dealer that I actually ordered it from but the gurney flat this little piece that you see on the back was hundred and eighty dollars which was more than the spoiler so that was the next mod following that we went under the hood Under the hood, we added the red line uh, hood struts. They are fabulous. They're black and red, so they match the car. They were easy to install. I can highly recommend them. While we were under here, we also added the JLT 3.0 
oil catch can. Another product I can highly recommend. I've used it on both of my cars and they definitely work. Also, under the hood, we added the K&N K filter. And if you were looking at the videos that I shot, you know that that is the same filter that will fit the GT350. So if you go online looking for the K&N filter and they don't show a listing for uh, the Mach 1, it is listed. Uh, it is the same exact filter that you get on the GT350. No more engine modifications, don't plan to do any more. However, I have seen online that their Pro Charger is coming out with a Mach 1 specific supercharger. Wouldn't that be sweet? Not in my cars right now. So it's just on a wish list of things. Maybe Pro Charger will see this video and say, hey, We'll install a Pro Charger on your car if you'll give us a shout out. Hey, that would be great. Probably not going to have enough. So, that's it under the hood. Then if you look at the front of the car, you will notice that the headlights are tinted out. We did not go with the completely black tint. We used the smoke and Contrary to what I've seen on other people shooting videos on this, I found it absolutely easy to install. It took maybe 20 minutes for both sides. I put the um, film out in the sun. It was probably 85 degrees, sat it out there, went on without a flaw. And I like it. Went through state inspection, did not have any problems. The other thing, and I'm not going to completely show it to you and I, I, I toiled with it for a long time. I did not want to mount a license plate on the front of this car because I think the front of this car is kicking the way it is and I didn't want to mess up the look. So we also got a hideaway plate in the front. So like you can see now when I'm not using it, it stays down here. I'm not going to lift it up and show you my tag but it flips up and it slides back when you're at the car show. Great product. Only had to make actually two small um, screw holes into the plastic and it holds perfectly. Now that's for the exterior. That was the last exterior mod that we did. After that, we went inside the car and we did some modifications to the interior. So let's get inside and see. Okay guys, on the passenger side, what we did, we did went with a carbon fiber um, overlay that goes around the Mach 1 badge, around the area that has the chassis number. So if you look here on the front, it came out really nice. I was certainly impressed uh, and I like it. I didn't wanna do carbon fiber for this area here. I've seen it on other cars and the shine that comes off of it creates kind of a glare. But we did do, the carbon fiber uh, inlays also over the instrument panel all around the uh, infotainment center and around the you know controls and the knobs here I like it it's not real this one's not real carbon fiber but it does look good I think we also added down here uh, red billet aluminum uh, knob covers like that just a little accent to kind of bring the red in with the black also our start button is a carbon fiber red start button. I like it. It looks good. Even if I think so, just myself. So the last interior mod, which was the last mod that we did, is the steering wheel. And I'm going to start it up just so I can straighten the wheel out and show you. I had been looking for the carbon fiber steering wheel and most of the ones that I saw online were $800 and up. I didn't want to spend that because we're, like I say, keeping things on a budget. So what we went with is this Icon steering wheel. And if you look at this, it is carbon fiber. It has the flat bottom. It has leather on the sides. It has red stitching, carbon fiber on the top. You have to take your controls out of the stock steering wheel and replace it into the steering wheel. And so far, I think it feels and looks great. I highly recommend it. So 
that is the update for the race red mock run called miracle what are we going to do next well we are heading down to charlotte motor speedway we are going to uh do the track attack in the next uh two or three weeks uh so we will have footage of that um but for now that's all we have i am certainly enjoying the race red mach one one other thing that we did do that i didn't really mention and i was kind of embarrassed to mention it uh at a thousand miles i changed the oil now everybody knows that the new uh five liters specifically even the mach one uh uses five w30 oil i toyed with it a long time but i always have used uh, mobile one oil uh, Ford recommends the semi-synthetic. I like a full synthetic after the break-in is done. So at a thousand miles, I did the oil change and I added Mobile One uh, motor oil. For all of you all who are attempting or going to attempt doing your own oil change, let me give you two tips of advice. One, if you're going to do it by yourself at home, make sure you have a very large wide open oil drain pan to drain the oil in. Uh, I don't remember when I had my 2016 GT having this issue, but I have a oil catch can that has like a funnel type uh, apparatus on it. And when I went to pull that plastic plug, now all these new Mustangs have the plastic oil pan. Um, when I undid that plug, that oil came out so fast, it overwhelmed the strainer type drain pan that I have. Oil went all over my garage floor. It was a mess. And I promise you it will never happen to me again. So that is one word of, a ca of caution. Two, uh, when you're changing the oil on these cars, um, you have a aerodynamic uh, pan under the front. But Ford has equipped it with a trap door. There's one screw, you unbolt it, and you're able to get to your oil filter. That was the only issue that I had. Um, wasn't a big thing, but it did make a mess. So if you're going to change oil, make sure that you have a very big open pan because these cars take 10 quarts of oil. And let me tell you, when that was done, uh, probably about six quarts went in the pan and about four of them went on the floor. So, a word of caution if you're going to do your own oil change. But that's it, guys. I hope you guys are doing well. We are certainly looking forward to the track attack. We did receive our care pack from Ford. You can also see that in one of the videos that we recorded um, previously. Um, but other than that, everything has been great haven't had any issues, nothing to take it back to the dealership for. Of course, I only have thou a thousand miles. I, I don't live very far from work. I drive it as much as I can, but hey, it's a thousand miles. I hear some of the people say they have way more miles than I do, but I mean, hey, um, it is what it is. But if you're looking for or looking uh, to buy a Mach 1, I've, I've recently uh, looked online. I have seen them as reasonably priced uh, around the country, maybe in the mid 50s. That's a stretch. Of course, if it's mid 50s, by the time you um, put tax and everything on it, you're going to be very close to around 56, 57. Um, and I have seen them online as high as $70,000. Anybody that pays $70,000 for one of these Mach 1s, let's just say you have more money than I do because I would. I mean, I love this car, but I would not pay 70 grand for it. Um, this is a base car. And, and, and for all of you who, who think, well, it's a base car, it doesn't have anything on it, that's completely wrong. Base car has navigation. It has uh, the, um, the warning system that tells you when there's a car on each side of you. It has the polo lights. It has navigation. It has pretty much everything except for uh, heated and cooled leather seats. Um, this is not, like I say, a handling pack. It does not have aluminum pedals, but it has pretty much everything else. Even had the heated heat steering wheel. So I'm impressed. Has the active exhaust. Everything that I want in it, it has what it needs. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't say that enough. Some of the people who are on Mustang 6G site, um, some of the people, 
Well, it doesn't matter what site they're on. They're always calling it a parts bin car or they're calling it um, a GT350 wannabe. It doesn't matter. These are great cars. Anybody who says that Ford just puts parts on a car, uh, yeah, they did. They used parts that they already had available to build a car that is special. These cars, if you haven't driven one, don't trash it, don't bash it. But if you have, you know, like I know, these cars are special. And that being said, I want to say thank you, you all. Uh, continue to like and subscribe. I know we haven't put a lot of videos out, but we have life happening. You know, we have parents that are getting older. We have uh, children in school. And myself, I'm a minister, so that always comes first. Ministry and reaching people with the gospel is my main focus in life. So if I don't drop a video, just give me a little grace and mercy. But if you would, like and subscribe, and I'll see you again on the next one. Have a great day. See ya.